Hello, and welcome to another in a series of technology-focused video tips brought to you by the team at K2 Enterprises. My name is Tommy Stevens, and I'd like to extend my personal welcome, and we are very excited today to deliver some news regarding Excel's relatively new stock history feature, a fantastic addition to the function library in Excel. I hope you're looking forward to learning a little bit about stock history. Without any further ado, let's jump right into it. A lot to cover in a very short period of time. Now, stock history is a function that has recently been introduced into the Excel function library. And when I say recently, let's kind of date things just a little bit. I am recording this in the middle of February of 2021. Stock history began dribbling out a little bit uh, in the summer of 2020 in some beta versions. And it appears as if it started uh, showing up in the Microsoft 365, Office 365 environments, uh, probably around December of 2020. 20, of course, carrying over into 2021. It is a fantastic new tool. It's probably not something that everyone is going to want or need in Excel, but for those who do need it, uh, it will certainly be a welcome addition to the function library. Essentially, what stock history is all about is a function. It is a function in Excel that allows you to retrieve historical pricing as well as other information regarding stocks, publicly traded stocks, that is, in which you might be interested. Nothing more, nothing less. So I can use stock history, for example, to say, go find the price that Intel Corporation, for instance, was trading for on April the 17th, 1997, for example. Okay, so we, we can go in and, and very specifically indicate the stock or stocks in which we are interested and also the date or dates in which we are interested. Now, there's a little bit of bad news associated with stock history, and that is if you are running a perpetual license of Excel, for example, Excel 2019 or Excel 2016, you will not have access to stock history, at least not until the next time that Microsoft publishes a new version of the perpetual licenses. That is rumored at this point to be sometime in 2022. We'll see if that happens. But for now, just understand that stock history is being rolled out through the subscription-based models of Excel, that is, those provisioned through a Microsoft 365 or an Office 365 subscription. And even then, it may take a little bit of time for you to get stock history slipstreamed into your version of Excel just simply because of the update cadence that you happen to be on. As you may know, uh, if you're in the 365 environment, you can get your updates on a monthly basis or a semi-annual basis. And even then, your IT staff could defer those updates for a, uh, a period of time, uh, typically up to around 18 months or thereabouts. So if you if you are in that subscription-based environment, you try using stock history and it's not available, unfortunately, you're just going to have to be a little bit patient uh, before you can gain access to stock history. As we think about what stock history is all about, again, it's just simply a tool that allows us to retrieve historical pricing and volume information on any stock or stocks, publicly traded that is, stock or stocks uh, in which we might have some interest. And, and I think a really good example of, of how accounting and financial and other business professionals might use this, let's say, for instance, you're a CPA and you're in a public practice environment. You've got a client who's come to you. They've inherited some stock. Uh, they don't know perhaps uh, what their basis in the stock is. Uh, they, they, they didn't make note of it on the date that uh, the stock was transferred to them. You could actually use stock history, for instance, to go back and say, okay, let's find out the, the date of the death or let's find out the alternate valuation date six months thereafter. We could use stock history to go and look up uh, essentially what the basis is in that stock in, in an example such as that. So very useful tool uh, on a number of different fronts. It's also a very simple tool to work with, as you will see in just a moment. In its simplest form, really all you have to do is just enter the ticker symbol and the date in which you're interested in retrieving the historical price for. Can be that simple. Now, we can also make it a little bit more elaborate. That is, we can add some optional arguments into stock history to also pull in some other information. For example, maybe we want to know the opening price of the stock on a given date, the closing price, the high price for the day, and perhaps also even the volume. Those are all options if we are working with stock history. 
So let's go ahead and jump out of PowerPoint momentarily and uh, talk about and show in a true Excel environment how we can indeed take advantage of stock history. In the first example that we are now looking at on my screen, this will be a very elementary uh, illustration of stock history. All I have done in this particular case is enter a particular formula, and I'll magnify this formula so you can see it, but I've entered a formula into my formula bar that basically says, hey Excel, please do me a favor and go retrieve the closing price for Microsoft stock as of January the 29th, 2021. So equal stock history, open parentheses, ticker symbol, comma, date. Close the parentheses, and voila, you're done. Now, not quite that simple because notice that you do indeed have to surround the ticker symbol and the date with quotation marks. So equal stock history, parentheses, quotation mark, ticker symbol, quotation mark, comma, quotation mark, date, quotation mark, close the parentheses, and you're done. And as you can see in this fairly simple example, the stock history feature has gone out and it's found that Microsoft closed at $231.96 on the date of January the 29th, 2021. More to the point, what you will see is stock history actually returned those four cells. Cells A1 through B2, uh, those were all returned by this particular stock history function. We're not limited, however, to something that is that simple. We can actually go and ask our stock history to pull in a stock's uh, closing prices, I should say, for a stock as of a range of dates. Now, before I go any further in this example, I want you to notice that I have hidden uh, rows 4 through 252 in this case, just so we're not overwhelmed with volume. But in this example, I did indeed ask for stock history to pull in, again for Microsoft stock, pull in the closing prices for a range of dates. And notice that that formula is very similar to the one that we looked at just a few moments ago. Again, equal stock history, ticker symbol, first date, comma, second date, close the parentheses, and it is now pulling in uh, the stocks for, I'm sorry, the closing prices for that range of dates. Again, very simple, very easy to work with, and also noteworthy that once we pull this information into Excel, we can treat the data as if we had key punched it into Excel, as if we had, as if we had manually entered it into Excel, which means I can do anything I want to with that data at this point. Oh, by the way, if we look at that, going from $160 on the first trading day of 2020 to $222 on the last trading day of 2020, looks about like a 35 or 40% uh, return during one year if you were an owner of Microsoft stock. Not too bad. Let's take a look at one final example of stock history to show you just how easy as well as powerful this feature is. And in this case, what we have done <clears throat> via the stock history formula that was entered into cell A1 is we have said we want a little bit more information. Now again, I'm pulling this information in for a full year, so right now the formula looks exactly like the last one that we, that we examined. However, I've added some optional arguments on the end. Some optional arguments to say not only do I want the date and the closing price, but I also want to know the opening price, the high price for the day. Let's go down here so we can see that. So the opening price, the high price for the day, the low price for the day, and also the volume. Without going into all of the details on what each of those optional arguments, uh, the 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are all about, you can certainly get those uh, in the Excel help system. Just recognize that those are indeed options uh, when you are using stock history. So it's not just limited to, uh, to, to pulling in the closing price. One final thing to note about stock history, if you're familiar with the concept of dynamic arrays, which were introduced a couple of years ago in Excel, then you will certainly see that stock history is generating a dynamic array. You can kind of see that by the blue outline around all of these prices. 
I'm not going to go any further with that um, because that, that that would be opening up Pandora's box in a, in a, a short video tip here. Uh, we do have a tip out there on dynamic arrays, so if you're not yet familiar with what those are all about, let me encourage you to go take a look at that particular tip. So to begin to wrap things up with our discussion on stock history, fantastic new feature, again, available presently only in the subscription-based versions of Excel. And any time that you have a need to pull in historical stock prices, you probably should take a look at using the new stock history function, assuming, of course, you're working presently in a subscription-based version of Excel. On behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, thank you for the opportunity of sharing this information with you. We certainly hope that you found it to be useful. We encourage you to come back and visit us anytime we try to get up uh, new tips uh, periodically as, as uh, new features appear, not only in Excel, but other common applications in use. Once again, thank you. Have a wonderful day.